and an overprotective mother. Oh. In this emotion booking heart-wrenching tale, you'll laugh, you'll cry. But mostly laugh. Right. Well, here's the print in his three fates, directed and adapted by Zach Showerman and Moco. Michael Cohen. into the world. Very well, my son. You may leave the castle. All I ask is that you go visit the king of the next kingdom over. He's invited you to meet his daughter. Very well, mother. Super long time! <laughs> my love, now that we are engaged, I must tell you something. What is it? I was given a prophecy at birth that I would die by either a dog, a serpent, or a crocodile. <laughs> if you do not wish to be with a man that is doomed, I understand. My love, I would never leave you. But how can you stand to have a pet dog when you are fated to be killed by one? You have to kill it! I, I would never. This dog has been my only friend as a child and has never caused me any misfortune. Then, will you at least carry a sword so that you may be safe? Of course, my love. But before we are married, you must be my mother so that she may give us her blessing. Time pass. The servant, servant, where is my mother? My prince, I am sorry, but your mother has fallen ill. She is resting now, but you will be able to see her tomorrow. Meanwhile, you and your betrothed may have the room down the hall. Time pass. <laughs> my love, are you awake? No, I suppose not. Wait, what is that moving in the corner? Oh my, a servant! And it's moving toward my sweet prince! I must stop it, but how? Of course, this ball of milk, <laughs> which is common to the time period <laughs> which we are living in currently. I will just place it in front of the servant and, yes, the servant drank the milk and fell asleep. Servant, servant, come in here. Yes, princess. Take this servant far away from this land and my prince. Yes, princess. But um, while you're awake, I think that you and the prince should come here. The queen isn't doing very well. Time pass. Son, I am 45 years old. <laughs> Are you okay? 
something hurt you? You're so pale. You've been acting strangely since you returned from your hunting trip. The truth is, the other day while I was hunting, I tripped over a crocodile who swore to me that he is my fate. He said the only way to break the spell is if I were to dig a pit in dry sand which remain full of water. He called, <laughs> he called it a chance, but he might as well just drag me into the river right then and there. I cannot escape my fate. Well, you are unlike my sweet, for there is a magical plant located in my kingdom that can keep water in a pit for a whole year. I will go and search for it in the morning. Now don't you worry, my king. Everything is going to be just fine. It's time pass. Now, just take it easy there. My love, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to convince this crocodile not to eat me. <laughs> Sweetie, I've got the plant right here. Oh, my queen, you returned just in time. Don't just stand there. See if this plant works. Look, he's going back in the water. You saved me, my queen. Wait, my king, watch out! <gasps> from the monkey's paw that sometimes that's true and it's not always a good thing. What do you mean? If you wait a couple seconds, you can find out for yourself. It's pretty self-explanatory. All right then, let's see it. Then we invite you to enjoy The Monkey's Paw, written by W.W. W. Jacobs and adapted and directed by Taya Kaplan and Olivia Darrell. I should hardly think she'd come in this weather. Well, think again. There she is. Sergeant Major Morris. Thank you. That will take the chill off. My father has told me many stories about your adventures. Knowing your father, they've gotten better with time. Well, if you yourself would come around to tell him sooner. Twenty-one years she's been off in the military. When she left, she was just a slip of the youth in the warehouse. I heard your travels have taken you to India. I should like to go to India myself. Look around a bit, you know? Better where you are. I should like to see the old temples and fakirs and jugglers. What was it you were telling me the other day about a monkey's paw or something, Morris? Oh, it's nothing. At least nothing worth hearing. Uh, a monkey's paw? It's a bit of, well, what you might call magic. To look at, it's just an ordinary little paw, dried to a moment. What's so special about it? A fakir, an old and holy Indian man, placed a spell on the paw. He wanted to show that fate ruled people's lives, and that those who interfered with it did so to their sorrow. He put a spell on the paw so that three separate men could each have three wishes for him. And have you had three wishes, madam? I have. And did you really have those three wishes granted? I did. And has anybody else wished? The first man had his three wishes, yes. I don't know what the first two were, but the third was for death. And that's how I got the ball. If you've had your three wishes, it's no good to you then, Morris. What do you keep it around for? Fancy, I suppose. And if you could have another three wishes, would you take them? I... 
I don't know. Well, if you don't want it, Morris, give it to me. I won't. Throw it in the fireplace like a sensible man. But if you keep it, don't blame me for what happens. How do you do it? Hold it in your right hand and wish aloud. But I warn you of the consequences. Sounds like the Arabian Nights. Don't you think you might wish for four pairs of hands for me? If you must wish, wish for something sensible. What could be more sensible than dinner? Morris, you'll join us? Father, whatever happened to that monkey's paw? Yes, did you ever give Morris anything for it? A trifle. She didn't want it, but I made her take it. And she pushed me again to throw the paw away. Throw it away? Why, we're going to be rich and famous and happy. Wish to be an emperor to begin with. Then you can't be henpecked. I don't know what to wish for, and that's a fact. It seems to me like I've got everything that I want. If you only just cleared the house, you'd be quite happy, wouldn't you? Wish for 200 pounds. That'll just do it. Oh, I guess it can't hurt. I wish for 200 pounds. It, it moved. As I wished, it twisted in my hands like a snake. Well, I don't see the money. And I bet I never shall. It must have been your fancy, dear. Never mind, though. There's no harm done. But it gave me a shock all the same. I expect you'll find the money tied up in a big bag in the middle of your bed with something horrible squatting on top of the wardrobe, watching you as you pocket your ill-gotten gains? Good night. <laughs> Good night, Hannah. I suppose it's time I retired to my room as well, dear. Good night. The idea of our listening to such nonsense. How could wishes be granted in these days? And even if they could, how could 200 pounds possibly <laughs> hurt you, dear? Might drop on his head from the sky. Morris said these things happen so naturally that if you might so wish, attribute it to coincidence. Well, don't break into the money before I get back. I'm afraid it'll turn you into a mean, avaricious man and we shall have to disown you. Hannah will have some more of her funny remarks, I'm sure, when she gets back. That may be true, but for all that, the thing moved in my hand. That, I'll swear to. You, you thought it did. I say it did. There is no thought about it. I was asked to call. I come from Ma and Megan's. What is it? Has anything happened to Hannah? There, there. Don't jump to conclusions. I'm sure you haven't brought us bad news, have you, ma'am? I'm sorry. Is she hurt? Badly hurt, but she's not in any pain. Oh, oh, thank God. Thank God for she that. She's caught in the machinery. Caught in the machinery. Yes. She was our, she was our only child. The firm wished me to convey their sincere sympathy with you and your great loss. I beg that you will understand I am only a servant and merely obeying orders. I was to say that Ma and Megan's disclaim all responsibility. They admit no liability at all, but in consideration of your child's services, they wish to present you with compensation. How much? Two hundred pounds. <laughs> it, it will be all right, dear. The paw! The monkey's paw! Wh what? What is it? What's the matter? You, you've not destroyed it? It's over in that dresser. Why? I only just thought of it now. Why didn't I think of it before? Why didn't you think of it? We only had one wish. Was that not enough? No. Go get it and wish our daughter alive again. You don't know what you're saying. Let's go get some sleep. We had the first wish granted. Why not the second? A coincidence. Go get it and wish. Look, she's been dead for 10 to days. Bring her back. I really don't think that that is a good wish. It's foolish and wicked. Wish. I
I wish my daughter alive again. Graveyard is two miles away. Let's go to bed. It's it's my girl. L let me get the door. For God's sake, don't let her in. You're afraid of your own daughter. Let me go. I can't use it. Use the third wish.